Hi, my name is Renee, and this is my knitting podcast. I wanted to start a knitting podcast uh, to gain some community with knitting because I don't know a lot of knitters near me. So here I am. Uh, this is going to be podcast number two. I'm back for a second. I'm back for a second. Um, yeah, and got a little bit more uh, better. I got a better mic setup. Hopefully that's working. Uh, a few people on the last video said they had trouble hearing me, so I wanted to make that a little better this time. Uh, so let's get into it. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, so what am I wearing? I'm wearing one of my knits. Isn't that exciting? Um, it is a wrap cardigan with big poofy sleeves. So the pattern I use is the neck down wrap cardigan by Knitting Pure and Simple. Uh, it was $7 US. Um, I pretty much just followed the pattern for the body of it. I modified kind of everything else. <laughs> Uh, the yarn I use is the Feeling Good Yarn uh, by Wool and the Gang, uh, and it is 70% alpaca, 7% um, merino, and 23% nylon. Uh, I had a few colors. I color blocked it <laughs> because I wasn't, I didn't have, it was just kind of a mishmash of a project. I wanted to use the yarn because it's really soft and beautiful, um, but and I didn't want to make the the pattern the kit that I got the yarn with came with. So I made this color block cardigan instead. <laughs> uh, and the colors I used are Rocky Gray, Mellow Mauve, uh, Ivory White, and Eucalyptus Green. It is beautiful, soft, and I really, really like it. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so the modifications I made on this was... <sighs> I color blocked it, like I said, uh, and I decided to do t half twisted rib on all of the detailing on the cuff on the, I don't know what you call this because there's no buttons on it, but kind of like the button band and the hem. I decided to do that half twisted rib because it's quite beautiful. <laughs> uh, and I also, I, I think I made, I made it a lot shorter than the pattern kind of tells you to. And I also made these big poofy sleeves. <laughs> I really wanted like a balloony sleeve garment uh, and I pretty much used a whole ball to knit each of these sleeves. Uh, I actually I used the exact, the whole ball of the Mellow Mauve and I had a little bit left over of the Rocky Gray. I just blocked it out so that they were the same size. <laughs> because one was a little bit bigger but you can't tell now but yeah i really like it super cozy um and we'll get into finished objects so the very first sweater i've ever knit i'm so excited <laughs> as <laughs> yeah so this is the everyday raglan um, by donna Choi, and she's sheep and stitch uh, it's 12, the, the pattern costs $12.50 USD. This is it, just a top down, very basic raglan, top down, very basic raglan sweater. Um, the yarn I used was the Cascade Ecological and it was a natural colorway. So it just is just like a white sheep <laughs> essentially and 100% Peruvian wool. And I knit the size medium. I do think my gauge is a little off. I think it's a little bigger than it's supposed to be. Um, but yeah, I'm quite proud of it for my first knit garment. Uh, some of the details about it. Uh, yeah, like I said, raglan uh, and all the ribbing details, like on the cuffs, hem, and neckband. Neckband, that's what that's called when there's no button on it. <laughs> Uh, is a double ribbing. So yeah, that's cool. I got to do another different kind of ribbing. 
Um, and for each of my FOs, I kind of wanted to go through them each and kind of talk about what I love about them and what I learned from the, doing knitting the project. Uh, so what I really loved about this was I really, really enjoyed the color. I, I'm really starting to realize how much I really like like the natural sheep and alpaca colors of like just the natural colors of the sheep. I think they're really pretty. Um, and there's just something about them. <laughs> I've always really liked that natural white sheep color for garments I've bought in the past. But yeah, um, and I really like that's a really classic garment that I can kind of put over, I could put like a collared shirt under it and kind of dress it up a bit or just throw it on over top like a t-shirt I'm wearing or a turtleneck and just, just to keep myself extra warm underneath my jacket on a cold day. Um, and I've worn it against skin. I, so I'm not allergic to wool. Uh, I'm, it sometimes bothers me and is scratchy. Uh, like this yarn, it's very, very soft. This alpaca merino and nylon, it's so soft. There's like a little tiny bit of itch to it. It's wearable against my skin. I'm doing it right now. It's fine. Um, but I definitely can notice it a little bit. And with this raglan sweater, it's kind of the same way. It's 100% Peruvian wool, so it's a little bit, it's softer than if you were to get, I think, I guess, yeah, I don't know, softer than if you got maybe a North American or an, a British wool. Um, but I can wear it against my skin. Uh, it can get a little bit annoying, but it's kind of doable. Yeah. And I learned a lot. What I learned from this project, I learned a lot. <laughs> the first thing I learned is when you try, when you, I put it on scrap yarn, like halfway through the body. So I could try it on and see how it fit. And when I re, when I picked those stitches back up, uh, and I knit that first round, all my, all of my, almost all of my, um, stitches were twisted so in the center of this garment <laughs> somewhere yeah there's just like a line of twisted stitches <laughs> and i noticed it when i had knit maybe like an inch or two more and like i think now i would rip it back and and fix it but i just wanted to get something done and i was fine having it i still wear it uh i'm still very proud of it and happy i have it <laughs> um Oh, and this garment taught me how much blocking matters. I'm gonna put up a before and after of this sweater pre-blocked and blocked because it just made the world of difference. It looked like a wrinkled mess before. <laughs> I blocked it and then it was just nice and smooth and it was just it was a whole different sweater. Um, yeah, whole different, whole different sweater unblocked to blocked and I'm glad that my first project was kind of like that like there's such a drastic difference because I think that's a, a good segue into kind of always blocking my stuff now <laughs> I think I'm addicted to blocking um, and I didn't know how much of yarn of how much yarn chicken I was playing with this project when I was nearing the end of what I what was the last ball um, I thought I had another small ball um, somewhere else and in fact i didn't <laughs> I, so i have just this itty bitty uh, little ball of yarn left from this project so i used almost all of this yarn which is good i guess but i didn't even realize i was a pine yarn chicken so it wasn't that scary <laughs> um for my <laughs> my next fo I think I need a second. Uh, this is a school run hat by Penrose Knits, and that's Laura Penrose from the Knitting Pickle Podcast. Uh, this is the hat. Uh, the yarn I used for it is called Rosetti Yarns Alaska. It's a DK weight yarn, uh, and it's 44% acrylic, 26% polyamide, and 15% fine merino, and 15% alpaca. A lot of different things uh, and the colorway is fairy uh, and the size a 
adult. Yeah, the one I knit was adult one. Uh, so what I really love about this is F-O, <laughs> is I love the color of it. It is a, it's a beautiful color hat. It's nice, like, it's almost like a lilac color, but it's pinker than that. Um, and it's a super fluffy, really fluffy hat. I really like that. Uh, and I love the pattern. It was easy to follow, um, beautifully written. Not, I couldn't complain about it. Um, what I learned about this, <laughs> what I learned during this project um, is that I started this project on wooden needles and in general I have found out I really do not like knitting with wooden needles but with this yarn especially oh my goodness um, yeah this choice of yarn was not a good one it's when people like describe a yarn as like toothy I think they think it's like they, they're explaining it as like that really um, rough feeling wool. But this is really, really soft. Um, but it's sticky. Like it still has that toothiness and grabs each other. I guess like mohair, but it's not mohair. <laughs> uh, yeah. So not the best yarn. I also learned that I need to read patterns more carefully while knitting. So essentially what happened when I was knitting this is that uh, when, I was, when you're doing the pico edge for the, the brim, uh, I don't want to give too much away because it is a, pa a pattern, but one part is longer and one part is shorter. So when you flip it up, the pico edge is in the middle and it actually shows the pico edge. But I did that. I did them the exact same length. And so... It's not, it's not enough. It's flat, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to roll down just that little bit more to show, show that Pico edge. Uh, and I sewed it in and that's just how it is now. <laughs> I was gonna knit this for my mother, but it's, I'm, a, I'm okay with knitting something that isn't perfect and giving it as a gift, but this was too far away from perfect to give for a gift. And I ended up just not gifting anything to anybody this year except for my boyfriend and that hat you saw in the last podcast. Uh, what else I learned? Oh, kind of similar to the, the raglan sweater. Um, rip back, just rip back. <laughs> just redo it, you'll be so much happier. Like. I just don't like this hat now, but if I ripped it back and I had that nice Pico edge, I'd probably like it. <laughs> so maybe I'll frog it. We'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, I said the yarn was bad choice for yarn. Um, and yeah, I might frog it. We'll see. Next FO. So it's actually going to be the next three FOs because I knit them all in the same yarn. A little matching set <laughs> so the yarn for all of these is the Woolies quick and thick um, and the colorway is fossil and these are three separate patterns um, two of them have the same kind of cable and the other one doesn't it has a different kind so we'll start kind of smallest to biggest here this is a whew, sorry <laughs> everyday cabled headband and this is Michelle H. Corden's pattern. Just yeah that cable running down the center, a little detail on the other each side of it. It's very cute. I really really like it. I've worn it a lot. <laughs> and then the next pattern, oh and that's a free pattern. These all three of these patterns are free. And then I met I mit I knit mittens. And there's a cable just running down the center there. And it's the exact same cable as this one, essentially. Maybe there's like a slightly different stitch count, but anyways. And these are, this came from the pattern Classic Cabled Hat and Mittens uh, by Destiny Mayer. But I just did the mittens, I didn't do the hat. And then the last piece is, <laughs> one second, it's big. Uh, which way does it go? 
can't remember the smaller part. No, like that. Okay. This huge cowl. And then cables running every which way up this thing. <laughs> and this pattern is the Cozy Cable Cowl. Cozy Cable Cowl. Wow. Alliteration much. By Pearl Soho. Um, and it's very warm. <laughs> and let me see. It's a lot, hey? I tend to wear it folded down. Just like that. Or if it's really cold, I kind of wear it like a scarf. So I wrap it this way, wrap it this way, and then put my jacket on and it holds it there. Keep the neck and shoulders really warm. I've also just worn it around the house to keep me warm because it's nice and cozy. What I loved about each of these projects was that I got to do cables for the first time. And I realized I really like them. They're really fun. It's like... They're way easier than I thought they'd be. And yeah, like I said, they're actually, they feel, they're kind of fun to knit. <laughs> and you can see it happening while you're doing it. It's really, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Uh, these were extremely quick to knit up because they're in a super bulky yarn. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Um, they were, each of them, yeah, were really easy. Uh, I encourage any newbie to try cables. They're really easy <laughs> and they're fun and they look, they look like you know what you're doing, <laughs> even if you knew. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, all the patterns are free. So that's also a bonus. Uh, and what I learned about knitting these projects was, yeah, like I said, cables are fun and easy. Do them, try them. I realized that like quick, pr I should be do, <laughs> maybe not always, just kind of when I'm feeling I'm losing my knitting mojo to knit something in that's either really quick or is with big chunky needles on chunky yarn. So it is quick to knit up because I knit all three of these in just a couple days and it got me excited to knit again because I was feeling a little bit bogged down. But yeah, I did these came together super quick and I was ready to start knitting on something else. <clears throat> what I have written down here? Oh, <laughs> I said revitalize my knitting. Yeah, it did. My next FO, yeah, it's been a long time since I recorded my first episode. So there's a lot of projects. This is over a month of knitting. <laughs> And for a newbie, so I'm not the fastest, but like I said, it's it's been over a month, so <clears throat> I've had an ample amount of time to knit, and that month I had a lot of it off because it was winter break for school. So my next FO is just some vanilla socks. I knit these on DPNs, and the pattern uh, was, it's, it's free um, through a YouTube video from the Crazy Sock Lady. Uh, she does have a paid pattern for vanilla socks, but if you go on the YouTube video, she has how to knit vanilla socks in three different ways, like the DPN with DPNs, which is how I knit these ones, um, with magic loop and with nine inch circulars. So she shows you different ways and then she gives you all the stitch counts for everything and shows you how to do it step by step. So yeah, kind of a free, free pattern. And it just has that heel flap and gusset um, and then a kitchener toe. But crazy colors. <laughs> this is the Patton's Croy sock yarn. Um, oh, sorry. One thing. This thick and quick yarn is, yeah, like I said, it, the colorway was fossil, but it's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. And these, the Croy sock yarn. Uh, and this is a colorway, this is the colorway Mexicala stripes. They do not match. <laughs> uh, I thought I could get them matched, but I think they were both in, I think they were different dye lots because they don't have the same striping pattern unless none of them do. Like maybe they're supposed to be like this. For some reason, they both have that purple, big purple stripe um, in the same spot. That wasn't intentional. <laughs> but yeah, see, I started to knit with the orange here thinking I could and it would be like this one, but no. Anyways, but yeah, they, they're a little bit big, like 
I don't know if I stretch them out. Uh, oh yeah, and they're 75% wool and 25% nylon. So good old sock yarn. Uh, yeah, super cute. Yeah, like I said, I feel like they stretched out. They seem huge. <laughs> Uh, and they are a little bit baggy, so when I knit, so like I'm knitting different socks now, and I'm kind of doing them differently. Yeah, those are those. These are the Wide Rib DK Vanilla Socks, oh no, sorry, DK Weight Socks by Erica Saint. And they're ribbing <clears throat> on the cuff. So they're one, one by one ribbing on the cuff. Three three by two, I think, ribbing for the leg and the top of the foot, and then just straight stuck in it on the bottom so you're not stepping on the ribs. Um, and this is the Universal Yarn Adore uh, in the colorway Hickory. And heel flap and gusset, pretty basic. Uh, I wanted to do a rib sock. Oh, and these are 55% merino, superwash merino, and 45% acrylic. Uh, but yeah. They were way faster to knit up than the other socks because they're DK weight. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to do another pair of socks, but quicker, so I did that. I think they do fit a little bit better than the other socks. It's probably because they're ribbing. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. And it did, it called it a star toe. And it, like, it almost, it closes like a hat at the toe where you get to a certain mass that just run your, uh, run your which I'm gonna call it through your, your darning needle through and pull it tight. So there's a little circle right there. Uh, and I actually like it. It feels better on my foot than the Kitchenering, the toe. It kind of, it decreases from a few different sides, from four different sides. And I don't know, it just feels better in my foot. I don't know, we'll see. So yeah, those are all my FOs. Let's get into whips. Oh no. <laughs> I didn't bring it. <laughs> I didn't bring it. Uh, so my big first FO is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. Uh, the yarn I'm using is from We Are Knitters. It is the Wave Wool in the colorway Colorado. Um, and I'm almost done. I'm so close. Uh, I knew I was going to be... I knew I was going to play some sort of yarn chicken. So when I split for the sleeves, I did I knit the sleeves first because I didn't want to run out of yarn knitting the sleeves. But if I like ran a little bit out of yarn while doing the body and it was like a little bit shorter than I wanted, I could deal with a cropped sweater. That's fine. But so I did this. I, I knit the sleeves, knit the body. And yeah, I am out of yarn. <laughs> I lost at yarn chicken. <laughs> So there is more yarn on the way, two more balls. I just wanted to play it safe. I was just gonna get one, um, but then I just, yeah, better safe than sorry. <sighs> uh, the stupid thing is, is that yarn was a Christmas present from my mother. <laughs> and it. I asked for a 10 pack of the wave wool but I wanted two different colors. So I, I wanted a sweater quantity of one color and then just like a hat or mitt or whatever quantity of the other. So I asked for eight of the Colorado and two of the Flamingo colorway. And <laughs> yeah. So I could have not ran out of yarn and just got 10 balls of the Colorado and been fine, but no, I didn't, I didn't ask for that. <laughs> And I don't know why I didn't. I just thought it would be enough, I guess. I thought I hit gauge too, but I don't know. There's there's a lot going on with that sweater. Um, because I it's hard to get gauge because the wool is so strange. Like it goes thick to thin, thick to thin. Uh, so, and on the We Are Knitters website, it calls it an Aran weight yarn. But on Ravelry, it calls it a bulky weight yarn. Uh, and the zipper sweater calls for an Aran weight yarn. So I thought I hit gauge with it, but maybe I, I didn't count row gauge well enough. And I think I do tend to knit a little tighter that way. So I would need more yarn for more rows to get the same length. 
Uh, but yeah, so the neck is double folded, really nice and thick. Uh, and all the details on the cuffs, cuffs, hem, and neck are all twisted, half twisted rib, which I really love the look of. Uh, it really hurts my hands after a while, and there's a lot of it. And they have like, it's like extended cuff. It's not like a little one like this. It's like a big cuff. So, yeah, my hands have been hurting doing that, and I still have to knit the rest of the body and do all that twisted rib for the hem too. Well, I don't think it calls for as long as a hem as it does the hem on the sleeves, but ugh, yeah, my hand. I, let's say I, I needed a break from it because it was hurting. My, it was hurting me. <laughs> uh, this, yeah, this is going to be a zipper. I plan on getting a gold zipper with a with a circle pull zipper pull. I think it would look really cute with like the orange and the white in the yarn. I think it'll go really well. The sil yeah, I could do silver too or white. I like a white. I don't want to do a white zipper. I think it would clash with the natural color of the wool because it's not like a bright white. Um, what else? Yeah, ran out of yarn. Uh, oh, it's been a really fun knitting project. Really, I I think the I'm realizing that like if I'm really enjoying the colorway of something and like, just like the property of the yarn, I'm, I find it fun to knit, even if it's just stock knit because it's like visually interesting. So the yarn's all crazy. Like I said, it goes th the wave, like it goes thick and thin. And then the colorway is kind of like this speckly, stripy, orange, gray, white thing. And that's fun to look at. And I think it's really pretty. Uh, and I plan on wearing it all year round because and like it's it's a hundred percent wool that wave wool and it's gonna be a warm sweater it is thick it is big <laughs> it is like it's not plied yarn so it holds a lot of air so it's gonna like insulate really well and I knit it's knit at quite a tight gauge um, so it's gonna be very warm sweater I can wear it obviously in the winter time uh, and I plan on wearing it in the summer for campfires at night because it gets it still gets pretty cold here at night. Uh, and I want to knit it long enough to kind of cover, really cover my lower back even when I sit down because, uh, yeah, like my face, if my face is facing the fire, but my butt and back get cold. <laughs> in the, so, yeah, it'll probably get used all year round even though it's going to be a very, very warm sweater. My next whip, also, so yeah, my next whip is in this little bag, and I make all my project bags, because uh, I sew too, so I just made this one. <laughs> let me, like, let me know if you guys want to know more about that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but it's a little project bag, a little tablecloth, and some canvas bottom with a little zipper. And this is where I'm keeping my next pair of vanilla socks in fingering weight yarn. Again, it is the Croix sock yarn with the 25% wool, 15%, no, 20, 75% wool, 25% nylon. The colorway is gray brown marl doesn't mention the red I don't know why <laughs> uh, and I bought a pair of nine inch circulars and I'm knitting these on yeah they're uh they're two millimeters so I think that's a US zero I think a US one is the 2.25 but yeah I wanted a really really tight gauge uh, and like I said the other ones it felt like they were a little big so I figured keep the same stitch count to not complicate things too much, but knit them really, really tight gauge. And people are, what I'm learning is that if you're knitting a tighter gauge for your socks, they don't wear as fast. Uh, and that comes into play a little bit because I am, it's a vanilla sock and I just, just finished today doing the fish lips kiss heel. It looks kind of silly right now. Um, and that doesn't really have any extra, like the heel flapping, the heel flap, it, when you're doing the slip stitch heel flap, it adds like a really thick fabric so you don't wear out your socks as fast, but this doesn't. It's just kind of like stockinette, just as 
thick as the rest of the sock. So I figured knitting at a tighter gauge would be good to keep it lasting as long as they can. Uh, and I do plan on darning my socks whenever, if they ever <laughs> um, wear in or like wear out. Um, some people just throw them away, but I don't know. I feel like I'm an advocate for keeping things as long as I can. But we'll see. Yeah, I do plan on darning them. These are interesting to knit with. Uh, it took me, at first, it, it took a while to kind of get used to it, but about halfway, I really, I was get, I got in the groove of it, and I really do like that I can just knit, like normally in the round, just round and round and round instead of the deep hand, where it's like a side stop, side stop. But yeah. Um, fish lips get peeled. Oh yeah, these are cuffed down, obviously. Uh, counting my rows here, so the next sock can be exactly the same. Um, oh yeah, and I'm deciding to do the fish lips kiss heel because I really don't like the heel slap and gusset <laughs> method. I find it bulky. I, th I find it weird that the thickness is on the back of my heel, like and not like back and above my heel. Like to me, the extra extra fabric needs to be underneath my heel where I'm stepping. Like I don't ever get wear worn out socks when from putting my feet into boots or shoes on the back like I get holes on the sides on the toe and on the heel so I just find that odd I can feel how thick it is and I don't like that um, and yeah it doesn't like hug your heel and I thought maybe this one would and we'll try trying something new put that back in its little bag So my last whip is in this bag that I made, <laughs> another one, uh, same canvas bottom, um, and then a, this used to be a bed sheet, and then I made it into a skirt, and now this is the bottom half of the skirt, uh, of that skirt that I'm going to shorten. <laughs> so this uh, fabric's been around the block. Uh, and inside is my final whip, and it is right here um, and I'm gonna make the framework bralette by Jessie Made Designs I've already started and quite I've gone through a lot already <laughs> uh, and this is the Cascade Varenzia worsted 70% merino 30% silk I got eight skeins of this on a hell of a deal <laughs> uh, I th yeah they were really they were on like a they were like on sale and then on sale again I bought all eight because I saved a lot of money <laughs> if I did that. And yeah, I really, really like it. It's so soft. This is next to skin soft. This will not bother me whatsoever. That's why I'm making a bralette out of it because <laughs> it has to be next to skin soft. Um, what do I got here? Look at all those stitch markers. <laughs> uh, so it tr I, I've swatched this yarn I don't know how many times now I wanted to knit a pattern and my gauge was like so tight so tight uh, compared to theirs and I was so confused and I kind of finally realized like I said it's the Cascade Varenzia worsted I think this is actually a DK weight yarn I don't think it's a worsted weight yarn on Ravelry, Ravelry it's worsted obviously worsted is in its name so, but this is a DK weight pattern and it, and when I did a swatch for that, it's, it's swatching like a DK. Like, I don't think my gauge is that tight. <laughs> so that's a little bit strange. Took a while to find something to knit. Uh, oh, this is, yeah, this has been really, really fun to knit. And you kind of, you actually knit it inside out and then you flip it at the end. And that's kind of cool. Yeah, fun to knit. Um, this looks tiny. <laughs> it, I got concerned. So um, I don't have like a lot to support, but I don't have a little to support. Like I'm a, a little bit bigger than normal in the chest. So I was looking at all the women and people that have designed this. 
And Jesse says in the instructions, some people did knit this garment with 13 inches of negative ease. And I wanted to get as little, like as much negative ease <laughs> as possible because I don't, I don't plan on wearing it with a bra and I want it to be somewhat supportive. So that's why it looks so small. Don't worry. <laughs> I tried it on when I was done the, what do you call it? The band at the bottom. I put it on a waist yarn, put it on and it does go around me. It stretches, it stretches a lot. <laughs> So, yeah, it's kind of, hopefully it's some, obviously it's yarn. I have to have proper expectations. Like it, it's not going to hold my, hold it all up like a normal bra or anything, but I think it'll be nice to, it'll be nice in the summer. Should be not that warm. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and I knit the, the band a little bit longer because that's my problem with bralettes is i forget it was another podcast i think i was listening to and they're like yeah i'd love to go braless but like what are y'all doing about the sweat <laughs> and so i want this band to stay underneath the whole time but still be long enough to see underneath and not be totally covered by the top of the bralette uh, so i knit a little longer so i could do that and so it won't be sweaty <laughs> Yeah, maybe that's too much information, but there you go. Take it or leave it. Leave it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and yeah, this this is probably going to take two skeins of yarn. Maybe not even, like, I'm not going to knit, knit the whole other skein, probably. But uh, I have plans for the rest of the eight. No, sorry. The six? Yeah, the six skeins. I do want to make some sort of sweater. Um something that's a little bit tighter because like, like I said, it's so soft. I, I can wear it next to skin, no problem. And uh, yeah, I'm not, not overly sensitive, but I am a little sensitive, especially in the neck. That's kind of where I get the itchiest. And sometimes on the head, if like a headband or head, uh, headband or head, <laughs> headband or hat. Okay, we are at acquisitions. We're almost done, so sad. <laughs> really like recording these. Uh, I'm learning. <laughs> so we're going to talk about my first acquisition. And it is the it is, Cascade 220 Superwash, 100% wool, Superwash wool. Um, it is a DK weight yarn and the color is 801 Army Green. Uh, and to go along with that, I have the Drops Kid Silk in... If the color is dark green, I think those match pretty good for buying online. Not too shabby. Uh, and yeah, so the, and the mohair <clears> of <throat> the kid silk mohair is 75% mohair, 25% not silk, 25% silk. And yeah, like I said, I plan on using these together. It's going to be my first project using mohair, so that's exciting. Uh, and I plan on making the Jesse May designs, the winter crop. And that is a pay for a pattern for $12 USD. And another acquisition is my Patton's Croy, another Patton's Croy sock yarn, FX, 75% wool, 25% nylon. And the colorway is actually Cascade Colors. That's the colorway, it's Cascade Colors. <laughs> uh, and it's kind of like this, like it has a couple, like a greeny teal blue, uh, like an oceany blue. A beige a very light sky blue and like a brown it's very all over the place but I think it's really pretty um, caught my eye I'm gonna make some sock out of this uh, might be making I, I'm probably gonna just make vanilla socks out of it and maybe shorties oh no no these aren't gonna be shorties these will be like a normal I don't like tall like a mid-length sock obviously I don't plan <laughs> I'm not holding myself to these plans. If I change my mind, I change my mind, but these are just my current plans right now. Uh, and my last yarn acquisition is a Perfect Pair. Um, and the colorway is, oh, the colorway is Promise Land. And these are 23% viscose, 7% polyamide, and 70% acrylic. These I plan making shorties. Uh, like in more summery socks that I can wear with like 
sneakers or whatever. Uh, and yeah, there's like this orangey brown color, a darker brown color, gray and white. And I think those are very pretty. Um, yeah, excited to knit those too. Like I said, I said on the past podcast, I kind of always want to make sure I have a pair of socks on the go, like a vanilla sock, just so I can, it's very portable, easy to knit and can just do it wherever. And yeah, it's been working out for me so far. So I plan on keeping doing it. I plan on keeping, I don't know, I plan on continuing. <laughs> uh, and I have one last acquisition, but it's not yarn. It is actually the Chaigu Lace Tip Interchangeable Set, uh, the four inches, the four inch tips instead of the five inch tips. These were an investment. <laughs> uh, and I, it's like... I'm a student right now. This probably wasn't a smart choice. Um, you, actually, let me take that back. This was a smart choice that looks stupid. <laughs> These cost me like three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, oh, sorry, no, three about three hundred dollars, a little over that. I could have got them a little bit cheaper online, but I kind of to pay like I don't know t between twenty and fifty dollars extra for my local yarn shop. I think that's a better way to spend my money. And that's kind, of, that's kind of within reason for me. Uh, and in the long haul, I think this is going to save me money on needles. I've already acquired, like I'm a really new knitter and I've already acquired too many um, fixed circular needles than I even like already. So I think this is a really good investment. Did you hear that? People are crazy. I'm in an apartment and they're jumping all over the place. Yeah, so I really like these needles. Pretty great. The first time I used them, it unscrewed a bit, but now that I know how to tighten them better, they haven't caused me any trouble. And yeah, I hate, I absolutely hate the case it comes with. I think it's so ugly. Uh, and Sewing Renee <laughs> plans on making a new case for these needles that looks a little prettier and feels a little better because it's like a polyester feeling stuff and I don't like it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> very excited to have these, but investment. Uh, and we'll kind of close out talking with, we'll close out chit chatting. Uh, my boyfriend really loves his hat that I made him for Christmas. He wears it all the time uh, and because his, he has such a big head like I said before he it, it doesn't like other hats will like kind of like fall off his head like that and like cone up so I wanted to make sure I knit him a hat that fit and didn't do that okay uh, I think we're done for today thanks for joining me uh, I look forward to recording episode three hopefully a little sooner than however long it's been this time Anyways, have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are and whenever you are. Bye.